Uh, in this video, an interesting situation developed between, um, according to MP Ultra scenario, it did happen on May 17, 2024. Let me see that. That was a Friday. I got the visit. Uh, actually, my mom got visit from wife from my um, uncle, cousin, something like that, father's cousin, um, much older, who recently passed away, uh, is what they claim. Um, he passed away, however, exactly according to MK Ultra scenario. That's something I have to accent. And uh, she stopped by exactly according to MK Ultra also scenario. Uh, the thing about her, what makes her interesting to me is she was involved since I was uh, just a very, very young age. And when I say involved, she was a translator. What exactly that means? Well, uh, she translated for my, whenever I boarded the planes or was driven to, especially to Germany, because she speak good Deutsche Sprache. Her name is Stenka Ausitz, and she witnessed uh, the stuff I was talking about. Something like Drago Pokorni, let's say. Yeah? So, translator, MPL translator, literally involved since my very, 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 very early age, whose husband, I get really, really angry uh, when told that he passed away because he passed away exactly according to MP Ultra scenario. And I don't see her anywhere on the internet. I could find her, really, I could, but finally, I'm not going to be doing that stuff because she, she is not on the internet. I'm not going to go and stalk her and just, I'm not going to be doing that kind of stuff, right? So, she worked for this company, it's called Kirka Pharmaceutical, and this is not she. This is just another lady that is that also was involved in MK Ultra with her last name and first name uh, with my last name, and she is next to the rabbit, and that rabbit looks like more like a human, anyhow. We're going to go here, or we're going to look at this stuff here. Um, there you go. Yeah, she also learned some English. She also uh, became competent enough uh, to speak English if it was necessary. She became, as a female, she was much more gentle uh, and somewhat became my preferred method of communication, especially whenever I was taken to Germany. Yeah, so quite an important person. Um, who paid the visit and who, however, was very, very deeply involved, uh, made a relationship, believe it or not, with Prince, now King Charles. Um, 
a strong relationship, however, with the police director from Novo Mesto, uh, Janis Ogulin, and very, very strong connection also with the team Kapsch, um, with the people that were involved in MK Ultra, uh, psychiatrist Kapsch, uh, Robert Golop, the politician, now Prime Minister Robert Golop of Slovenia, Milan Kuchan team, Borut Pahor team, Tanya Fayon team, uh, and so she is a definitely interesting cookie because she appeared here, and I don't think it was according to MK Ultra scenario based on what the stuff I posted, but there is absolutely no doubt about it that she appeared in a very very interesting moment, and this is when I revolted against. Um, a Robert Fico situation in Slovakia. So we are talking about Robert Fico here. Wife of Robert Fico shooter was actually uh, of light complexion. Yeah, she's Ukrainian. Stuff that I have done that I have described very, very properly uh, and totally rejected. And that was basically that happened after I returned from taking her um, to the graveyard. Um, she, she came, she is from this part of the city here. Um, so we are talking about... Uh, da, 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 da. Which would be more or less here. It would go this way, and uh, came uh, a distance. I will tell you the truth that she had a good walk, healthy walk, and you're talking about 3.2 kilometers. And I, you know, I felt that I should just take her um, home, that so she she would not walk home. She came to visit my mom. My mom was sleeping at the time. Uh, she locked herself in the room, was sleeping, and I would also not bother her. I let my mom sleep. So because of this situation, I offered her that I would take her home. It's three kilometers. She's not that young anymore. <laughs> You're talking about lady. Huh. I really don't know her birth date, but I imagine... Late 60s, or I not late 60s, but early 70s, I would say. And so this is where her husband supposedly was buried. I still disbelieve the death because the death. The, when it comes to MK Ultra, everything was about the death certificates. When it comes to the Novo Mesto police, Novo Mesto. Uh, investigators, everything was about the death certificates. I told you about the, my schoolmates that were involved in this stuff, all of a sudden perished and died. Uh, another guy who was involved in it also all of a sudden died, and everything happened according to MK Ultra scenario. Anyhow, you see this here? Um, people that were too much involved in MK Ultra, okay? And they perished according to MK Ultra scenario. This is where I would take her afterwards, after the visit, to our home, uh, just to make sure, because I wanted to take her home. But, well, she just wanted me to drop her off here. And that's exactly what I did. I offered her, I tried. And a little bit, you're going to hear our conversation. Uh, but this conversation was what a Nova Mesta police director, uh, yeah, yeah, this is... How can I say, this guy just have to, I, I really, really did nicely describe him also here in this video, and his sister, uh, by the way, his wife, his name is Jursic, uh, by the way, um, the wife from Novo Mesto, police director, let me, let me see that stuff here, because this is about 
his predecessor foremost, Janus Ogor. Janus Ogorin was so certain that what I will publish today, as well as everything else I have published on my new site, together with the psychiatrist Peter Kapsch, this is what they intimidated, this is what they threatened to it. Uh, is the only thing they're going to have to do is collect the information from my website, and that's all they need. Either put me into the psychiatric hospital or inside of the prison. Prison, dope prison, not too far from here. Um, that's what he claimed, right? And so he got himself a replacement. Uh, there was another guy in between. They changed themselves all of a sudden so quickly. This guy came, I think, in 2009 and finally departed in 2023. But then in between, they already changed to one guy, and then now it's another guy. And so this another guy I have already described very good also here. I gave more information about him also in this video here. Um, That would be this lucky man. <laughs> I... The man who got the main prize and who claimed he's not going to go to the jail. This is the guy. He claimed me that he will not go to the jail, that he will not go to the jail. I don't have a good news for this guy. His sister is brown eye. Uh, and, well, contrary to what he preached me about the brown eyes, he got married to a girl with the blue eyes, you know, uh, a farming girl, actually, that they have a lot of land, and she also has a sister, maybe even two sisters. So this guy scored the main prize, and, well, uh, in the middle of what they were sure I will stop. We're going to add this stuff here together because in the middle of what they anticipated, his name is Robert Fico. That is a Slovakian prime minister who engineered fake shooting in Slovakia. Something that Robert Fico have negotiated already with, just as I have described here, attack, Fico planned on attack with the British Royals already in 1998. Now, if you want from me, like, I can give you a detailed, this is the most corrupt it's not the most corrupt, but it's, it's, who is not corrupt in Slovakia, I don't actually know. But this is definitely one of the most corrupt politicians in Slovakia. Actually, this is quite hilarious, this guy. Um, I suppose that his health is not in a, such a danger. And so I assume that he joined this guy who is waiting for me to pick him up. It's funny when you work at the police as a director and you're waiting for to be picked up by the police. It's not a pleasant feeling, probably. Um, in fact, Robert Fico, the way he is shooting, the way his stuff was done, uh, his shooting, according to Robert Fico alone, was artificially done by the surgeons because he had health problems. He had already some surgery, something going on uh, in year 2000, which is like a considerable amount of time back. If, I, if we go back, Robert Fico had a surgery already. Sometimes, I believe, he had more surgeries than one. And nobody even understood why that he was, he was in a, such a fragile health. And so he made another contract with the prince uh, Charles, who compensated already his father very well. 
So he started to build political career completely on a corruption, on bribery, and it was good for Slovakia because they got industry, they got technology. This is the stuff we are talking about. And it seems to me that Slovenian police somehow was certain that at the right moment, if they sent me somebody like my aunt who was involved in it, that they would convince me uh, to stop talking about Robert Fico. And she appeared, she appeared in our house. Um, according to MK Ultra scenario, knew that I will offer her a ride. Yes. Uh, her husband from Zdenka House, that's his name is Antoine, yes, Anton House, practically my cousin, you know, in that sense, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, this guy here, this guy here, he did not die because I remember when he stated to me that I will even depend, it will even depend if he will help me out based on how I will offer assistance to his wife, Zdenka. So the stuff I'm talking about tells me that this man here, actually, where the hell is that graveyard? Here? Ah, huh? there you go. This man is not dead. 100% is not dead. Because this is what went on during MK Ultra and scenarios I know I am familiarized with a bit too much. The whole thing goes straight to the police station and it's what Yanis Ogolin, uh, now this guy here, wanted to get the proof for me, like the last proof for the hospitalization for me. Yeah, uh, you see, Zdenka outset. Zdenka Ausitz, Google Outer Times, important. Find me, search for me. Uh, have found herself inside of the psychiatric hospital Ljubljana Polia. Let me demonstrate you. Where is it that I was institutionalized? And I will accent one thing, very much also because of her. She had the whole lot to do with it, yes. This is sort of my family, uh, like her daughters are my cousins, uh, but she had a lot to do with it, with hospitalization itself. Yeah, how? How would that be? Um, well, I will explain to you. I will explain to you what happened, yes? This is a psychiatric hospital in Ljubljana, Polia. This is where they institutionalized me in 2012. And I did describe about what went on in 2012 before they institutionalized me, what police was doing with me. Well, the thing about this lady is such that she truly obnoxiously turned against me for on behalf of these people here. He said the British Royals from the London. That's why I did not want to miss fact that she became quite friendly with uh, Prince Charles, now King Charles. He did learn also enough English also to uh, communicate with these people. However, she was assisting me uh, not solely in German, in a Deutsche Sprache, when I was small, nine, nine, nine. Uh, if we go back here to the city of the Novo Mesto, I'm going to demonstrate you a school where I was. It's called the Grammar School. Gurum. Yeah. When you get into the business with me, you're just... Uh, you're all mine. I don't have anything else to say. I mean, this is this is this memory of mine is better than the people that don't have actually MK Ultra memory 
memory on empty order is better from the people that would go and do stuff. It's fucking scary, actually. Yeah. And so, you know what? The year when this happened, yeah, and what exactly? Yeah. Uh, that's what's exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I was probably in a fourth grade. Yeah, that actually means about 11 years old. So and the year was 1982. Yeah. And uh, apparently that my English was not good enough. And uh, during MK Ultra, I got in fight with her here. And uh, this is very close next to her home. And this is what I demonstrated you where she lives at, right? So this was the area where I got in the fight with her, uh, right here in front of the store, in front of this Mercator, because uh, she wanted to be exclusive. She wanted me to recognize her as precious, as uh, irreplaceable, as somebody. And she started to fuck with me that I don't even speak English. Like I said, this has a long history of this year. Long history of this here. She knew how to be also abusive. She was nice, lady, uh, soft. But the nature of MK Ultra business is such that she might have believed actually she was a translator for the Kirka Pharmaceutical. Let me take you to her home. Yes. Okay, so I don't think they're going to allow me any further here anymore. Let me see. Shit. And I did go a little bit too far, I think. Yeah, I, I did. I did. This is here. Um, she wanted me to uh, start uh, to study um, English language. And... Um, I am not going to go into details. Yeah, that's it. Well, we stop here. Uh, and so, and the store is right behind this building. So you get right up the hill. So um, I was not apparently a good student. And she always intimidated me that I have to, she wanted to be, she knew what the fuck this is. You know, uh, with me, she got to see places she could only dream about. Nobody could believe this shit. Nobody could believe that you got so lucky that you go to the locations like this. That you go into the German government, through the German government, all over the Germany and Britain and around the world, basically. Uh, and so, say uh, like this, right? So now I'm gonna skip. I want to be very, very clear about this lady. Um, Kirka Pharmaceutical is located here, or I should say right across the river where I'm at. You see where it says Bonsai Massage Salon? That's pretty much where I am at. Right across the street is where I am at. And this is a Kirka Pharmaceutical. If you look, this is like, I don't know. Um... This is definitely not one kilometer uh, air distance. I mean, I mean, look at it. Look at this. I I see the Kirka Pharmaceutical is actually all this here. All this. So this is all Kirka Pharmaceutical. So and this is our house here. So um, right here, uh, this is this giant company. She was a translator. Yeah? She did translations also for pharmaceutical products and stuff like this. I don't know what precisely what the fuck she was doing also. Um, this is her life. And in between, she was used for other stuff by the Slovenian government, by the company Kirka Pharmaceutical as well. So she is a tricksy person, really, really tricksy person. And I say this because... The psychiatric hospital Ljubljana Polia, where I was institutionalized in 2012, and she had a whole lot to do with it because she expressed the full support for the psychiatric hospitalization against me during MK Ultra. I would not see her other than during MK Ultra at all. 
she was only used to threaten to intimidate in real time if she would appear. And she would appear like once every 10 years in my life. That's all there is to it. Everything was through MK Ultra. everything. Um, beginning in 2010 is bad stuff was happening. Um, it, I think since like 2000 and they work on destroying me, absolutely, since 2006. And in 2010, uh, I, I turned again absolutely everybody. Uh, they started to present themselves as essential to me. Uh, they demanded for me to get down on the knees in front of them. And one of the people I have sent to the hell uh, also was she, based on very, very, very heavy torture, which, which especially went on in this area here. This is a very, very violent place, this area here. Oh. Very, very bad place. Very, very, very bad place, this place here. You know? Um, this is where a lot of bad stuff went on, this here. The reason why she turned against me, as it appeared, was because of the local physicians and doctors that live in the area. There were local doctors, physicians, some of which even participated in my, since my childhood in it, that turned against me because I was against Serbia. I was against Serbs. And so now again, I have this whole area, this whole fucking city going after me uh, and doing their best to hunt me down my confidence. And instead of that, uh, I opened another front. I sent everybody to the hell. And in fact, it took them another oh, two years and a half, something like this, to eventually, because there was no way to hospitalize me, lie against me. Uh, press lies against me as if I did something to somebody and so on. I stopped even communicating with her in real time because of this violence which went on. And there is another uh, family here, uh, Jasnic, the same thing. I didn't want to have to do any, any with any of them because they engaged in a torture, in a physical torture. You can call it MK Ultra if you want. But when you're sleep deprived and you're not allowed to sleep, this is the most severe, one of the most severe forms of torture, especially if you're causing trauma, psychological violence to an individual, which was the case since my childhood. That was the main platform used for what they believe we are going to develop mental patient. Yes. So... Things were not for us. Once I was thrown into the psychiatric hospital, um, something interesting happened with her. It appeared to me like she did not last for too long. And before you know, she alone jumped on the psychiatric pills. Um, she claimed that, I don't know what the situation was. Her place was extremely funny. Uh, with her daughters, with other part of the family that was involved in torture. Uh, not a good stuff at all. Uh, but before you know, she started to claim that she needs psychiatric pills to beat, to, to remain alive, to survive the, um, I don't know, anxiety, whatever, stress, I don't know, uh, fear. And so... Um, it was horrible to see her, the way she suffered. Uh, she, she um, in, in many ways, it tried, to, uh, tried to replicate me. I don't think anybody could possibly replicate me. And it's a high, high, high possibility that lady was actually making fun of me. There is a high possibility that lady was actually making fun of me uh, that she was making full of me, that she was actually scorning me because she continued to engage in a terror for the benefit of the psychiatric hospital, Ljubljana Polia, which used her also on this very occasion. 
According to MK Ultra, she had to obligate herself. Will paid the visit to this home in order to trigger psych even psychiatric hospitalization. This is what she claimed. Yeah, you can say that this is intimidation or whatever, but like I stated earlier, this is what directors of the Novo Mesto police anticipated they would just everything they would get from my website and so on. And this is gonna be just shit, 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 and it's gonna be, yeah. Well, um, here is your chance because I'm going to put her audio. I'm going to put the entire audio online, so you can you can free you can go you can go ahead and you can use it and make my day because one way or the other I am coming for you. Uh, it won't make a whole a lot of difference for you whether you will do this or you will do that. It doesn't matter. I'm straight. One thing is certain: if you have something that can save you more power to you but i think you don't have jack shit it's nothing wrong with my self-confidence you will see so she appeared in a moment to uh doubt you know to, she dared to actually with a psychiatric doctor down polia to doubt me uh about it appears to me because i was in the middle of this stuff here about the slovakian uh Prime Minister Robert Fico, uh, it appeared to me like I started this stuff on, on 17, and after I posted this stuff here, um, it was more information to pop up in my head, and she appeared like in a crucial moment, somewhere like uh, never ever was shot. This is what I published. And the next thing, I was going to publish something else, and she interrupted me at our home. And yeah, um, mother did not come downstairs after she ringed the bell. And then I did go and I greet her and I and I told her that I'm that um, um, you know uh, we came to agreement that I will actually take her home. And so I started to get ready my computer and everything. And eventually I did took her. Uh, but what is interesting is another thing. The way this stuff was done, because I'm in the living room area. Uh, now I am in the living room area. I say I'm in the living room area where I was also at the time of her visit. And I say this because uh, that's door from the hallway. And then we have this door here from, from the balcony, you know, where I would also go to... Uh, to communicate with her. Uh, what's interesting is, I did not go, number one, I did not go downstairs, which was something that I was suggested in MK, MK Ultra itself. Never leave wherever you are, uh, because the moment that you're going to walk through the door, it's going to be somebody else inside of the room. This actually did happen. And I think it also happened this time, because... I did uh, heard something on a hallway. Um, I did go uh, to to look for my mom after it ring, and um, my mom was just locked inside. She was obviously she came from visit, which she paid to the father. Uh, she wanted to get some sleep, and I wasn't gonna bother her right so what i did was i instead uh went to the balcony i told her i said look i said Stenka, mom is sleeping you know uh why don't you just go and get yourself some strawberries and um i i did this before i'm gonna call my mom i suggested her please go get yourself some strawberries make yourself comfortable and so on uh and yeah, I'm very, very nice to the people, unless you, unless you do something idiotic. Yeah, um, that's all there is to it. Uh, it became apparent that mom was locked inside of the room. I came out again. I told her uh, through the terrace, look, she's sleeping. Um, She 
she did not go get the strawberries, whatever she said, right under the terrace, like she, she stated she would do. It's all audio recorded, the stuff. And I suggested her, look, mom is not, uh, she sleeps, this and that. And um, you know what, Zdenka, I told her, uh, I will, uh, I offer her a ride home so that, because she's older and everything, son, and I felt that it would be handy to offer her transport. And she said, uh, okay, she said, uh, yeah, she said, uh, you can take me, I'm going to go to uh, to Tone, to, to this, uh, um, oh, I can also show, this is very close to the Kirka Pharmaceutical, if, you know, we go to the map uh, from the uh, Kirka Pharmaceutical, this is where you see the, the patrol here with this, or you see the fire rescue. Uh, this is where this graveyard is, right? This thing here that you see, right? Something like this, you know, Pocopalice graveyard. So I told her, listen, uh, she said she wants to go here. I, you know, I told her Zdenka, I said to her, please give me just a second. And what I will do is I'm going to grab my bag, my stuff, and I am going to take you uh, to, uh, to your darling Tone. Uh, so the thing is, uh, <laughs> as soon as I, uh, I was going to head downstairs, I, I did lock the door before I, before I, um, before I stepped on a terrace, uh, just as I was advised by the police alone to do. And the only thing that happened was when I was trying to unlock the door, uh, when, when the door is just like, I don't know what they have done to the door, but the door jumped, boom, like this, boom. It made noise. Uh, the lock, the lock itself is uh, like this, that it's very difficult to open one. It used to be difficult to open one, and they did something to it. And unless somebody's trying to force the way, it's okay. Uh, but it looks like somebody was trying to force the way, because the time I took to go to the balcony, somebody appears to me was trying to get in. So, so that's why I say that it was quite interesting. This is always the case. This is the thing. Uh, whoever comes for a visit, uh, it's better to greet him through the balcony. And if, you know, there is something more that is required, then you just take your stuff and you go downstairs to greet the person. Because of such a destitution that was done to me, some destitution was literally done to me when I left the stuff belongings inside of this house and would walk out of the house, leaving them behind. And it was highly involved theme thematica, thematic in and character procedure itself. It really works for me, this. It appears somebody was trying to get in. Um, once I grabbed my stuff and I did go downstairs, that's also interesting, my mother came downstairs. Wow. Uh, I did not call her on the phone. I had nothing, none of that stuff. And all of a sudden, she finds herself downstairs. That's also interesting, isn't it? Um, so, uh, like some kind of telekinesis or something like that. Um... Anyhow, I offered her a ride to, uh, to her desired location, that is to this graveyard. Uh, she accepted it, and I offered her the best I possibly could have. But she did, in return, advertise uh, psychiatric services from Psychiatric Hospital Ljubljana, Poli, and police heavily tried to intimidate uh, with the issues pertaining to psychiatry. Um, this is something that uh, will be heard from the conversation, which I will translate to you from the audio recording so that you're going to see how it works. Uh, at the same time, uh, the lady who was involved in MK Ultra and supposedly was interested in me, and I was not interested in her, she is an engineer, I understand, at Kirka Pharmaceutical, I think she is. 
Um, she has uh, a four-year degree. Um, and now probably I even deserve a slap. But then on the other hand, I don't think so, I do. They had me all over this Kirka Pharmaceutical, and this lady, she is from Ragoska location, uh, skinny, uh, still is skinny, yeah, pretty much the way she was, um, like always in her, um, she wear the white shirt, uh, pants, not a skirt, pants, uh, and a long uh, a coat, like a business uh, try uh, similar to psychiatrist Tatiana approach, similar. But under MK Ultra, this is what it would be. It would mean to me when I was taking her across the bridge. This is the bridge. This is where she met here. Uh, this is this is the way it is. Uh, she would I, I would see her right here passing next to me when uh, the wife from uh, let's call it my uncle, if not cousin, because he's so much older than myself. Uh, he's in a really good shape. I mean that's crazy. I mean this guy, this guy, the guy that passed away, this individual who passed away, um, her husband, therefore. You see, this is Kirka Pharmaceutical, and then we make like this, we make, a, we make a left turn, we continue. This guy is an alpinist, a skier and alpinist. Uh, he did also head to Himalaya. Uh, he did cross the South African on the uh, Cordillera, therefore, uh, he spent his life doing mountaineering, um, extremely, you're talking about extremely healthy and dynamic person. He's an alpinist, actually. Uh, maybe that, yeah, he should be somewhere. Alpinist, alpinist, and houses, smoother. Yeah, this should definitely be. He should definitely be. He should definitely, definitely be. Oh, shit. Nowhere to be found. Uh, you're talking about very, very person, skinny person in a very, very good, very, very good physical shape. His time did not knock out, and everything is according to MK Ultra scenario. Uh, I maybe this is the one here. I'm not sure. Let's see this here. Okay, <laughs> it's not here. Uh, I don't, uh, let me see that stuff here. No. She did not only work for the Kirka Pharmaceutical, hear me very good. <laughs> um, she also worked, it's called Lake Ljubljana. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do like this. Lake Ljubljana. Yeah, this is now buyer pharmaceutical company, something like that. So, um, various pharmaceutical companies, Sandos. Now, at Sandos, it used to be, I think, even buyer or whatever. Uh, I'm sure that you know. It's a lot of pharmacy here in Slovenia. So, but you know, um, different kind of companies, uh, and. I am not saying that she doesn't have, that she is not, that she did not experience something bad, that something bad did not happen to her. But it's funny because, it's really funny, it's hilarious, because in, in 2000 and, you know, 2012, they threw me inside of the psychiatric hospital, uh, and... Not too long after that, you know, in like 2014, maybe something like this, 
she, she claims she is experiencing, maybe even 2013, uh, she herself is now experiencing psychiatric problems and is extreme, is experiencing like extreme fear, extreme, uh, I, I don't even know how I would properly explain. I'm going to, I'm going to play you an audio because it's really interesting. This is very interesting stuff also, by the way. Uh, and you're going to hear our conversation the way we had the conversation, right? Uh, and, you know, I think I came to the end of the story. Uh, the best would be basically just go to, to the audio and go from there. I don't know what to tell you about it. Uh, I'm not saying that she is not experiencing problems. Um, I have no idea. I don't know. I really do not know. Um, she even went to the psychiatric hospital for like two months. Uh, this hospital, I had no fucking idea about what goes on. All right. Um, obviously that you would not go and eat psychiatric pills if you would not experience, uh, psych problems. Uh, now, Unless you would do something like this to see what is inside of the psychiatric hospital. Uh, if she did something like this, whatever. Um, I have no idea. I have no idea. It's uh, quite an important person. I mentioned this video also because it's a very, very important person. Because of the issue that I mentioned. She escorted me when I was a child. To the Germany and also find herself in Britain. Like maybe she started the fight with me in a fourth grade, as I stated at age 11 here, uh, so that she would remind me that from the second grade, which was like from age eight, uh, also nine, 10, 11, that she even assisted what she insisted me she should not insist, you know. So she, in a way, it's, it's smart because she explained to me that. She is also covering the British market, in other words. She's also visiting with me uh, Windsor Castle, uh, Buckingham Palace, and other locations throughout the Britain. So it was her way, basically, to communicate me this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, calling me dummy, basically, for not speaking English in a fourth grade. Fuck this. I mean, I was, uh, how can I say? I mean, um, I didn't like, uh, I mean... If somebody was trying to make himself look like irreplaceable, and she really did, I I, re I resented this stuff. Um, how can I explain this properly? She was, um, I will never forget one time when she stated to me, uh, she terrorized me. She stated to me, uh, how bad the stuff is with me, how terrible the stuff is with me. I mean, she was just full of shit. I mean, she would just go and tell you. It, it, it already was very difficult for me, man. Inside of the school, the grades were really low. It was uh, violence all the time I was surrounded. And she goes on my ass. And she really, really, really know how to stress me even more with her tongue. She started to push me down the throat how bad it is in the school. Uh, where are you going to even make it through the school? What the fuck is going to be with you? And I don't know what. And boy, uh, and what are you without me? And this and that. And then I just fucking lost it, man. I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, she was breaking my balls without any kind of reason. I was always nice to everybody. And uh, she just wouldn't fucking stop. So I, I had to defend myself basically some way, somehow. I mean, this was a hell hole. It's impossible to even explain how, you know, I hated every fucking day I had to go to the school. It was, it was reasonably understandable. It was not an easy situation I was in. And she started to take advantage of it and even suggest me like she's like, uh, you know, irreplaceable for me, and, you know, the stuff you should already learn English and stuff like that, and this and that, and you're not even fucking doing that, and so on, I, I fucking exploded, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it, and then, you know, then she said, well, you know, I told you that you're not going to be capable to handle the stress, that you are, uh, that you're not, 
uh, yeah, she was in a way very, very childish, in a way um, educational, but you know, this shit was painful. I mean, it was peach fucking dark painful. Uh, suggested me that I don't have anybody, and if you're going to lose your, uh, uh, you know, and everything is collapsing, like she makes such a scenario, uh, maybe I even suggested her, maybe I don't know as a child that I am, that the stress doesn't affect me, maybe, or something like this. And so it was her way to fuck me up during MK Ultra completely, I suggested me everything paint and dark completely, like, uh, well, you know. Uh, and now even those friends are leaving you. And I don't know what friends the fuck were these friends. Uh, something was related to MK Ultra, whatever went on. Uh, and it ended like this. Uh, after she painted the picture that I'm like fucking dead. Like completely just, you know, the only thing that I felt like I need is basically somebody to pick me up like you pick up the... Uh, you know, a car or something, and you dump him on a junkyard or something, and then fucking throw him in a gear, graveyard or something. That's the only thing I needed to hear, basically. And so I asked her, so what the fuck I do? What, what should I do? What should I do? Back when I was 11 years old, this stuff went on. And so she said, you know what she said? Well, you have to take care of your friends. And I, I was like, what kind of friends? What? Well, you know, those British and all this uh, royals and stuff like that. Uh, you have to be nice to them uh, because you know I asked her what what how can I what to do how can I survive <laughs> and she started to fuck with my sanity basically suggesting that the friends that you have you have to be nice to them uh, it's the only thing you have left still everything else you don't have I mean in that sense you know what I mean she had her way basically to breathe you behind the the collar man and Fuck me up psychologically completely, which is characteristic for MK Ultra, basically. This kind of stuff, you know. Um, actually, according to MK Ultra scenario, and I did not consider that stuff. Uh, from what I recall, she actually even played James Bond at the psychiatric hospital in Blana Polia. She claimed me that she went on a mission also to the psychiatric hospital. Ljubljana Poli to see what goes on. Well, when I stated this, obviously now, based on what I stated, something is suggesting me that she is not suffering from the uh, from uh, from the from the problems for which she is taking a psychiatric pills. Now, can I actually pledge to this stuff? No, because. Because of this kind of stuff, I mean, you know what I mean? Because I, I cannot pledge this kind of stuff from the people that were involved in MK Ultra for people like this. It, this is the stuff that is easily provable even to me or something like that. This is my word against the medical record and against opinion of psychiatrists, physicians, uh, her personal opinion. And that's the exact kind of stuff this dude right there you see uh, is trying to pull against me on behalf of his uh, patron, on behalf of his mentor, Janus Ogoli. And then there is something else about it. I am still that child when I was 11 years old. I did it by myself. You know what the Frank Sinatra stated? You know that song? You know. You know what I mean. I am a nowhere near baby, psychologically abused, or down, or, you know, in a panic, or suffering from any kind of anxiety, panic, uh, trauma, or anything like this, that I would allow anyone to take over control and suggest me, well, you know, uh, Without us, you're lost. You're nobody or nothing. No, 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 no. You're fucking wrong. You're mistaken. Uh, this case is done. This is a done deal. And the thing about this case, if you don't fucking understand this stuff, why the fuck do you think I did 
so much stuff, so much work. Did you fucking read my blog, the stuff I investigations based on memory from MKUltra with the stuff I did? You know, that's a fucking state of the art already if you're committed yourself to sit inside of your fucking room and record the videos and write about it and document everything that went on. You don't fucking go and fucking tell me that I did this shit myself. And I am saying this literally with a cancer on my right side of the throat, under the jaw. And it actually hurts sometimes. Nobody fucking does this. You push me to this degree, that means nobody will fuck with my sanity. Nobody's going to condition me. Say to me, oh, it's going to be either this or it's going to be like this and I am this and that. No, 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 no. No, no such a thing. It doesn't work here. Uh, just like in all other cases, they uh, also try to intimidate me with this issue. Uh, it did not work. I came home and then I blew the fuck out completely out of this Slovakian Prime Minister Robert Tico. I went totally out and I started to record everything about what went on during MKL to inspect his assassination. What exactly happened to the Robert Fico? Robert Fico had that surgically done on his body. Due to health problems Robert Fico have experienced. Robert Fico experienced his first problem around the year 2000. Probably I would even say these are two problems that Robert Fico already experienced the problems when he was like in 1995, something like this, he had a health problem. And then he had another problem in 1998. Now we are talking some very serious problem that came out sometimes in year 2000. In 1998, he had a serious surgery, whatever the fuck it was. In, in 2000, he was very serious. He was even more serious. You know, and this is this shit here is where the British Prince Charles, now King Charles, started to instigate into the possibility of what would become known as a shooting. And now is again, prove me and prove you. I prove me, prove me, prove you. I have many, many more proofs, real proofs. You got no, none fucking that something is wrong with me. You have no fucking proof. This is why, basically, well, you know your business. You do your business. Now, I am going to even upgrade. See, this is the stuff I did when I came home after I took her uh, to visit the graveyard, supposedly of her husband on pawn houses. And now I'm going to even upgrade this stuff with a little bit more related to Robert Fico, to Slovenian Robert, to Slovakian Robert Fico. You see, it looks like Robert Fico is now doing fine. Um, is unstable, is communicating. Uh, he continues with his stuff, but I continue with my stuff too. He did this surgically. He did this surgically. They did him surgically, this stuff. Yes? Uh, Robert Fico went on. I am not going to go into this stuff because it's. I don't want to get into... Um, If I would make a statement against the leftists or against the rightists, uh, it would be either the right side or it would be either the left side that would hate me. Now, the thing about it is this block here is legitimate because it's no longer as it used to be. It was all crazy because I started to take sides and, and I went insane, really, with this stuff. And no longer is what the case used to be. This block is legitimate because it's legitimate. It gives the account. Um, he had a problems with the leftists. Uh, and this stuff here was to serve him to purge the leftists from the Slovakian government, for which he even started to insist me, those who make so many problems to you, it is going to be for you. So uh, everything that we talked about, keep silent and so on. <laughs> you know, the thing is that he covered up for the leftists. He covered up for the leftists. Leftists were extremely violent. 
he was the next one who took violence on the next level from them. He inherited the case of the violence and started to cover up for the leftists. I would not go and guess between the Slovakian leftists and rightists because I, you know, uh, I am saying, I'm just going to put it this way. Uh, Slovakia was under no mean uh, a country that was uh, extremely passive about Soviet Union, especially Yugoslavia. They make me so many problems, so much suffering. The most, the country that exercised the biggest solidarity with genocide against me from all Eastern European countries. Uh, solidarity against me with Russia and Serbia, Belarus, the, the biggest supporter of it was exactly Slovakia. So, please, so much violence went on in every village in Slovakia. Please, 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 uh, don't fucking go and make me guess whether this guy is left or he is right or what the fuck he is when I have a job to do. Uh, my work, the stuff I do, is of a, of a much greater value than works of the politicians. I, I would not go and compare myself to that stuff. We, we wouldn't do this. Maybe next time. Let's go to the audio recording, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to translate your audio recording. Then in the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you listen to our conversation. Има кохота, такова куцести на вручини, тъм бувай да кърък. Иста психиатрична средство. So, here is where we start. This is, this is the beginning. The ring is very loud. Oh my god, it's fucking... Uh, what is this here? 30 minutes long? Uh, brutal. Not really, no it's not. It's just 15, not even 20 minutes. So these tactics of intimidate, you know, intimidate, they continue to do this stuff. They, they try to intimidate, they, they try to intimidate and they try to, it was all kinds of stuff that went on. Uh, they continue to do it. Uh, she says she wants uh, Anitza. Anitza, this is my mom. And, well, uh, I tell her I will call her. I will call my mom. I gladly will call my mom. Uh, she is uh, right under the balcony. I, I did go to check on mom, and I tell her, Zdenka, I tell her, uh, mom is sleeping. Uh, please tell me if there is anything I can do for you. She says, no, uh, I just came uh, for a visit uh, to see how she's doing. Uh, I did go for a walk. Uh, 
someone I would have, uh, I could talk to, basically, yes? Yeah. Uh, I, I tell her, yeah, but, you know, uh, I see, I tell her, but she's sleeping, you know? I ask her, but uh, I told her, then, please tell me, did you, uh, did you, did you walk all the way here? And she said, yes, I did. And I told her, uh, I told her, Stenka, uh, do you need a transport? Do you, would you like me to uh, give you a ride home? I, I tell her, I, I'm more than glad to give you a ride. I'm more than glad to give you a, a ride with a car. Mom. Mom. She says to me, uh, do you have a driver's license? Well, um, <clears throat> this is from an ultra scenario. She said, just remember uh, the question, do you have a driver's license? She rehearsed with me this meeting during MKL, not only on one occasion, but on several occasions, and have reminded me. She rehearsed this stuff with me on at least, I estimate, like three occasions, uh, and she reminded me of this meeting through the question, we will be a question if, you ha if I have a driver license on, I don't know how many occasions. Uh, it also fits the year. Uh, I In year 2013, I, they delivered me, I don't know from where they delivered me, and I was simply uh, abused, tortured, delivered home. I remember her husband, Tone, and uh, was in a very, very bad mood, and I did not want to, after I was thrown into the psychiatric hospital, what happened, I did not want to communicate with anybody anymore. Uh, they did that stuff to me, but they did not anticipate that I no longer will talk to anybody anymore. And so it happened. Uh, the only thing that happened when they threw me inside of the psychiatric hospital, I would not talk to anybody anymore in real life, nor during MK Ultra. And now they started to torture me during MK Ultra, also to break my will for resistance. Uh, torture did not only go in uh, during uh, during uh, hospitalization in psychiatric hospital Ljubljana Polje. Things turned out uh, uh, for the people who put me inside a psychiatric hospital a little bit more than impossible. MK Ultra is always used to break the will, the human will in a human being. They caused a very serious health problems. This is when this scenario was born, by the way. That's why I mentioned it. She said, she said, okay, you can take me with the car. And I said, I can. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, So I say, I, I will gladly take you. I tell her, I'm going to put the stuff inside of my bag. And there you go. I come and I give you immediately a ride. I tell her, please go and get yourself some strawberries over there in the garden. You know, it always was like this. Or just have a sit right there uh, and, you know, I will be right there with you. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, I will jump over here a little bit. You will get the original recording. This is one, two minutes. Yes. I'm trying to finish something I was doing on a computer. Just. In respect to Robert Fico. And I am getting my stuff ready to take her. Okay, so she rings again, and I go to the terrace quickly. I tell her I'm coming, I'm coming, because you know I put everything inside a backpack. Okay, it did took me three minutes. That's true. So she doesn't want to be uh, a transport, does not want any more transport, but I insist I will take her. Um, I feel obligated that I have to make sure that because she came here, that she comes safe home, uh, you know. Um, it's the right thing to do because she mentioned earlier that she would appreciate and, you know, I absolutely will take her. Uh, so what I do is I tell her, look, I will do this with such a pleasure. Please, please allow me to take you kindly, you know. She says, she says, you don't have to because it's not difficult for me to uh, easily I can go you know she says I tell her I know it's it's not a problem for you I know you can you can but it would be really my pleasure to provide you with a transport to 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 take you and I am begging her actually I said please allow me so she says yeah okay I was going to only put uh, audio, but uh, do you hear the lock, the way the door jumped, boom, uh, that's because somebody was trying to get into the, uh, into the room, when you push the the uh, the door handle the lock will put itself in a such a position that uh you will then when you turn the key it will just boom it just jumps basically and off we go quickly as fast as i can Okay. Okay. So for a moment I wasn't sure I'm recording, but I'm I see it's okay, it's everything's fine. Uh, uh, this is his yeah. uh, Mama also comes downstairs, and I said, where are you? I said, but you were sleeping. Uh, and the two are talking, and I just go and I get my, uh, I get the car out of the garage, I prepare so that I take her. 
Sa abi med dessa kvällen oss den kopa just ni som vet det. Ni som vet det är inte så. Jag såg att det är bombs. Det är som jag har att ta. Som du får kopa lista låt. Mom says you will take her, uh, you will take her uh, home, right? And I said, well, my pleasure, of course I will. And uh, she says, uh, only until the graveyard, only until the graveyard. I said, whatever you say. Yeah, so I tell her, uh, look, I said, Stenka, uh, you know, why don't, why don't we do like this so that I, I take you uh, to... Uh, I take you to uh, to the graveyard, and from the graveyard we go together, and from the graveyard I also take you uh, at your home. Now, I, I actually, I, I could wait, whatever it is, everything is fine with me, as long as I can help. That's basically the way I feel. Any, any way that, that you want, you know? <laughs> any way you're going to say, I tell her, any, any way you're going to say it's going to be Whatever you say. I said, this is very, very nice that you did stop by because you never do so. I tell her, you know, uh, look, I tell her, if you would like to talk to mom, why don't you just call and I will, I will be really, really glad to, to, to come to pick you up to mom and take you back home so that the two of you can be together. You know, I offer her uh, because, you know, it's, it's a distance and I told her, listen, just why don't you just call me and I will so gladly go to pick you up, bring you here, and take you back. I say, I say, I say, I say to her, look, you don't have anybody that would that would that would do this for you. Uh, you don't have anybody that would provide transport for you here, and so I would gladly do this. I will go and you call, and I'll go to pick you up. And I will take you back home. Um, I just, I tell her, I tell mom and I tell her, I say, uh, why don't you, the two of you, take some time, spend together and... When you're ready, you give me a call, and I'll and I'll come, and I'll take you, and I will take you. Uh, uh, there is some uh, uh, strawberries over there. You, 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 the two of you can go talk to get some strawberries, whatever. And then, once you're done, you you call me, and I will take you. And Zdenka says, "No, no, no, no." She says, "I I am ready to go now. Basically, I would prefer to go now." Uh, you see, this is a time when people go home from work. So what I will do is I will just give you a, a full audio right below, separately in Slovenian language. Uh, but yeah, this audio here I am going to translate. So I go and I start the car because she says, yeah, preferably she would just go now. So obviously she is, she is not going to take time to spend with mom and she just 
you know, she has to catch basically when people are going back from work. Remember the lady that I mentioned earlier, uh, and for that matter, I am also going to go back here. Remember when I mentioned the lady uh, that was involved in MK Ultra from Ragoska? Uh, she wants me to see her. Um, is it becomes evident uh, from the Kirka Pharmaceutical? As it became evident from the Kirka Pharmaceutical, security officers also were returning from work. Now, the security officers from Kirka Pharmaceutical wear exactly identical uniforms almost to the Slovakian security services. This is what the funny stuff is. Uh, so I see the guy that is dressed up as a security officer. Uh, what kind of clothing is this here? Yeah, well, it's almost something like, you know, uh, well, uh, a gray pants with a gray jacket and with a white shirt. Uh, and also the guy whom they have sent was uh, returning from work from the Kirka Pharmaceutical according to MK Ultra scenario, yes, because this is what police was doing with me, driving me also around and so on during MK Ultra, and this is the scenario they prepared. Uh, this individual was a little bit overweighted, and this is what the psychiatrist cops compared Slovakian the security services, the people that I'm not going to say that we would met because I don't feel like I was part of any of that. Uh, I was hijacked. I had nothing to do with this. Um, I tried to push in my head, basically, that I was part of something, that there was nothing other than beatings and torture involved in it. But this is, I, I ain't no fucking part of any of it. I'm doing this so that I can stop this stuff. Um... To remind me of the stuff which started already earlier, right? And the stuff that we talked about earlier was about the Fico. His guards, his uh, security personnel in Slovakia, in uh, security detail that was provided for the Slovakian politicians, looks exactly like that. So... Yes, I was in Slovakia talking about the right people, and they knew exactly what the fuck I was doing. That's supposed to be a sign for me that it will be a Slovakian police very soon I would be talking to. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, I will be talking to the Slovakian police because they're going to have to talk to me. Not that I will be talking to Slovakian police. This guy was heading this way toward... Uh, the uh, hole, basically, from work. And uh, as I was returning also, after I took her to the, uh, to the graveyard, which I demonstrated to you, uh, just like you see that the red uh, clear right there is about to turn right on the semaphore light, was a Volkswagen, uh, not like this, it was like this. You know, somewhere here, let's say. It was a Volkswagen Golf station wagon. And no, this is, I don't know, this is probably uh, Opel, whatever this is, Omega-related stuff. It's another one, but it's basically the same chassis. Uh, which supposedly would remind me of blue Volkswagen Golf, same color, station wagon, you know? Same color, station wagon, same kind of color like this, uh, from a police investigator who uh, met me at Velike Brusnice in 2022. He didn't met me, he stalked me there. So um, this was another sign that was used during MK Ultra, also that was to remind me of that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
he wants to catch, and this is another issue that I will mention. She also explained me during MK Ultra that will have to be very fast because of the people that will be returning from the Kirka Pharmaceutical that we will have to go so that we catch the wave which a police uh, designed obviously for me to intimidate, to harass with, nothing other. I cannot otherwise affiliate with uh, any of these issues, yes? So, um, and so it goes. Uh, once she sits in the car, uh, she starts basically talking to me about the psychiatric hospitalization, uh, about the medications uh, she's taking, asking me how am I doing, and so on and so forth, that kind of stuff. But basically, police trying to uh, scan to see my, what my mental state is, and so I take a full responsibility for it. Let's see how that develops. So we sit in the car and trying to help her to fasten her belt, her seat belt, and we go. Off we go. There you go. I say, how are you? How is everything? She says, I'm not doing very well because I miss my Tony, I miss, I miss my husband. Uh, I, uh, I do not get into any mental games with her. I don't do any of that stuff. Um, I don't... Uh, I don't, I don't get myself into any mental games. I express uh, uh, compassion with her. Uh, you see, missing since February 2024. And I said, yeah, that is really, really hard to deal with uh, since she's missing her husband. I don't go and I don't start the discussion or anything like this. I don't do any of that stuff. I just... Simple, just as I stated. I I, I express feelings, uh, stating her, yeah, that can be really hard to deal with. She is, um, you know, you can you can visibly see her that she is taking this psychiatric uh, pills. Uh, and I said, uh, how how do you feel when you walk uh, due to sun heat, due to sun? Uh, how do you feel? Uh, I ask it because I tried those psychiatric pills myself. She says to me, but you don't take them anymore? And I said, no, because there was no, there was no need for any psychiatric pills. So I said, why would I take them uh, for if there was no need? So she's asking me uh, if I don't take them anymore. Now, so this is what... Uh, they hoped for it would be so i tell her this was as far as psychiatry it was all based on the political grounds against me as you alone already know this very well Uh, 
I ask her, what kind of medications are you taking? And so she's giving me the names of medications. I am really not familiarized with. And it doesn't matter, even if I would be familiarized with, uh, I would not go and, uh, you know, tell her what to do. Because I don't really know about her real problems. Uh, her problems, from what I recall, is just a feeling of panic, fear, which is uh, anxiety. Uh, totally, I'm going to say, uncontrollable uh, feelings, uh, which source, however, I do not know. And so if there is such an issue like this, uh, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a. I'm not a uh, somebody that would, you know, in its time, in its consultation, uh, and for the biggest part, we don't even know where the truth is here. What the truth? Which part is the truth? Which part is not the truth? And I'm not here to argue with anybody. You know. Yes. Ne poznam tek sredstvo. Mi pač moramo bi pogledat. Zakaj so ta sredstva namenjena psihijatr nisem uh, in ne bom, na sveta ne morem dati čist tako povedano. Zdaj lahko, lahko dejemo te neka sredstva proti depresiji, a je kakšno proti depresiji? Kaj... Uh, I told her, I'm not a psychiatrist, I don't know these medications uh, and I cannot give any kind of advice for any of, the, of these medications uh, you are taking. Uh, and so I ask her, what type of medications are this? Are they against the depression or against? And so she goes on to explain me which medication is against depression and. Aha, pa vi tu kup od kdaj pa tu svet svijeme, te ta dva? Leta in leta proti depresiji. Um, so I asked her, since when is she taking these medications? And she's not giving me any answer to it. The answer I myself already have provided for you. That's the answer. That's like such a detailed description that there is fucking impossible that anybody could counter any of that stuff, you know. I would absolutely know any of that stuff. I would not know any of that stuff if I would not recall events from MK Ultra. So, you know, you got to admit that my memory is fucking great. Uh, so I ask her, I say, um, do, do you, uh, do you, are you experiencing depression? She says, no, I don't have a depression. I have a fear. I have a fear. Uh -huh. And this is the stuff, this was not rehearsed three times only with her. This was probably rehearsed with me sitting inside of the car, next to the psychiatrist and next to the police, probably on more than a dozen times. Harassment, literally, with the psychiatrist asking me, fear, Yo, you hear this, fear, fear, and you're going to hear fear and so on. So, uh -huh. uh, uh, nemir, nemir, that is something like being without peace, you know, and the fear and having no peace, be in fear, this is what they compared with the letters I would get from Slovenian lawyers, from attorneys, when they started to push completely unfunded lies against me. Uh, loads of lies and then loads of letters I would get. I get not a stack of letters, but if I would pile those letters up, it would probably add to about maybe even, I don't know from how many attorneys I got the fucking letters. I probably got the letters from the legal letters from psychiatric hospital in Ljubljana, from the courts and so on. Uh, I don't know, maybe this would add to about one meter stack high. That was 
fucking crazy to go to the mailbox and open and see the, the all kinds of stuff that was written inside of those letters and from attorneys and from the I mean total sheer lunacy. I mean and this is what they were using to stress the shit out of me. And this is what psychiatrists afterwards they started to lobby me with the psychiatric fields were using as a tool for terror for the future tool for terror of what they're going to do. So as abuse, as torture inside of the psychiatric hospital went on, and outside of the hospital, through the legal letters that I would continue to receive, uh, psychiatrists using this kind of stuff, the very same stuff, to pave the road for the future abuse, for the future torture which would take place. So they were engaging in more terror also during MK Ultra. So now you you get the terror in real time and you also get the terror during MK Ultra. And this is what I listen. <laughs> So I ask her, you still you, you you still feel without the rest? You know, the rest is like rest is like you know Pochinek uh, peace, you know, stop that you rest. So she is unrest, you know, the unrest with the proper English terminology for what she is describing. She's in fear, she's experiencing fear and unrest. She cannot calm down, basically. In other words, she doesn't find peace. Um, it, it was like this since day one. She complained about this issue. Uh, that goes, therefore, to the year 2014. Because I remember this stuff, yes? So, because I know that this is a super, super wide spectrum, of problems that person could experience under the fear and under unrest. I tell her, unfortunately, that I would not know anything about this because, uh, you know, as much as I try to give her some advice because she asked me about how I feel after not taking those psychiatric pills, uh, and I assure her, really fine, everything great. Um, I feel that even that it would not change anything. You know, I always try to still give a good advice to people if if I have something something that would be something to my knowledge that could be a useful advice that a person could use. But, however, I come to the conclusion that there is nothing I can do because the spectrum of fear is most known to the person that is experiencing it. And through so many psychiatric consultations she had, psychiatrists eventually assisting her in it, uh, fear, she claims, actually unrest she's experiencing, probably unrest is something else, and uh, fear that, you know, she is the, the one who knows this best. And for that matter, this is what takes to sit with the person and go over, probably through more than one session. God knows how many sessions you will have to go through. Familiarize yourself with the person's life to really know what's going on and stuff like this. This is not solvable with a five-minute ride from home to uh, practically on a distance of one kilometer, uh, two kilometers. This is really not solvable. So, you know. Sorry, but I don't have any kind of experience in that field. So I ask her, is there like same thing? Like, is there like completely the same thing as it was when it first started? Uh, or is it any different? Is it any better, less? She says, no, it's the same thing. It's all the same. And I say, if you would describe this fear, how how that looks like, how would you describe one? So she says, it is indescribable. It is a terrible feeling of um, anxiety, basically, you know. <laughs> so, uh, pretty much the stuff that police is trying to do hard 
but here it really doesn't work. Uh, the snob, the snob uh, in Slovenian language, anxiety, you know, anxiety, the snob. Uh, Well, uh, she asked me, "Did you, did you, uh, did the two of you already ate something?" And I said, "Yeah, of course we did." Uh, yeah, I, I was not really good at uh, at cooking lately. I admit that, uh, but I did a lot of other stuff, which is useful for me. Yeah. <laughs> So she is giving me a cough. I said, yeah, yeah. And she's like, <laughs> Not the cough, no. So I said, okay, I see. Yeah. <coughs> she says, I was two months at psychiatric hospital Ljubljana Polia, she says. After she ends coughing. Two, two months she spent. Yeah. It, it did not help. Yeah. Še dodatno so vam da zdravila, pravite? Um, she says, I was two months in the psychiatric hospital in Ljubljana Polje, uh, and it was nothing really special. There was nothing really, you know, special that went on. Uh, nothing good really came out for me. Uh, and... I, I, I say to her, but wait a minute. I said, but, you know, there, there was a little difference, you know. There was a little difference uh, when you did visit it, uh, the psychiatric hospital. You changed a little bit the element. You know, you came Ljubljana, you know, from Novo Mesto. It is different. You know, some of these guys and girls that would go to the psychiatric hospital, uh, I'm not going to say they make themselves feel like at home. Uh, but uh, some that I have seen have, uh, I don't know, um, even in a way adjusted themselves there. Uh, it was like, I'm trying to find this beautiful, uh, it doesn't say, it looks like they have removed the sign that I, I'm always using this sign to, you know, what's the matter? I mean, the, the sign is gone. And that's the only thing is left for me. Oh, well, oh, this. Okay, so. And she says to me, and you are not taking any kind of medications. So I tell her, I don't know why I would. I tell her, I don't know why I would take this psychiatric, I, why I would take any kind of uh, medications. I say uh, the psychiatrists uh, who were in this I tell her, you know, the thing is that the psychiatrists who did this stuff to me, uh, they were involved in the case, MK Ultra case, uh, just as you yourself also were involved in the MK Ultra case with your now late uh, husband Tone. And they are 
under investigation. I plainly tell her like this, oh, she is coughing a lot. Yeah. So I tell her why I would be taking this uh, medications with based on what obviously was attempted murder through the psychiatry, I do not know. I never had any kind of needs for a psychiatric medications. I'm not suffering basically from any kind of issues, any kind of issues that I would need psychiatric medications. I tell her, you know, the lady who just went through the bridge, uh, I don't have the camera on, I don't have the camera on, but the lady, uh, the lady was involved in MK Ultra. Uh, no, what I tell her is, uh, is very, very, very closely reminds of psychiatrist uh, Proxil, of the lady Proxil who was involved in it. And what you are doing right now, you are imitating MKUltra. It became evident because of too many issues that this was another uh, imitation of MKUltra scenario which was orchestrated. This, this stuff was orchestrated on more than a dozen occasions with the police literally having me inside of the car next to the psychiatrist's car. At times even she would participate. Uh, so I I uh, I safely nicely uh, we go through the intersection uh, and I nicely deliver her to uh, to to this location here uh, here uh, to this graveyard here and then what I do is. Uh, I tell her, I think I told her that I'm happy I have uh, assisted her. And what I do is I offer her to wait for her, that I would still wait for her till she is done. Uh, if, you know, she wants me to wait for her. And from here, I would also provide transport for her uh, at uh, her home. And so, this is, she says thank you, and uh, it is where the two go, the two of us go apart. And because I did mention this issue about MK Ultra, she does exactly what she promised me she would do there in MK Ultra. And she says, Bom Slava Miru. Bom Slava Miru is exactly what my mom is also using, the same words, the same thing. And from here on, well, basically, she continues uh, her way, her direction. And so now, what I'm going to do is. I'm going to list this audio separately, only in Slovenian language. I, I tell her, listen, I am here to help you out, you know, because I'm really willing to wait and take her also home, whatever she needs. She says, that's nice. She says she got a good ride, that she, she the trans was okay, that she is pleased with the way I, I drove her. Um, she, she thanks me. Yeah. And I tell her, you please have a great day and please stop by again. 
Uh, so, you know, that so that we see each other again, basically. This is it. This is all there is to it. And what I'm going to do is, because this is just a little bit, I feel, uh, it is a little bit too much. I am going to go ahead like this, and I will put a video, the audio, separately right below this so that you can also have audio if you are willing to translate, you want to have this translated in your own language using your own interpreters, you do this. But this is going to the internet, this is going online, and this audio recording was, uh, it took place on May, May 17th, 2024. Uh, what is here for me to say? Well, uh, I certainly hope that uh, I'll get to meet both and Stenka and Tone. Um, here is where I would stop. The thing, however, is that there is no doubt I am in a complete control of the situation. And there is exactly zero anxiety here. Something that I know for a fact, it cannot be said for these people here. Thanks for watching this video. Till next time.